Hi everyone, it feels like ages since the last lumber mill update, so I'm sorry about that. Thankfully, I've got quite a bit to cover in this video, so let's get started. Since last time, I've added pathways to the game for employees to follow, added a bit of juice to the building and bulldozing systems, and started work on adding some sounds to the game. So the paving system will be a way for the player to start decorating the forest a bit, and I wanted to make something that also allows for the creation of larger paved areas than just pathways. So in order to achieve that, I wrote down all the different tile variations I'd need. This started off as 33 different tiles, reusing a lot of them in different cases. The idea here is roughly based on marching squares, which selects different tile shapes based on a unique value for the layout of surrounding neighbours. I won't go into the details here, but I've linked a useful video if you'd like to know more about that. I've added dirt paving so far, and at first I just outlined the basic shapes of the 33 tiles without any kind of detail, just to make sure the system works first. I created the necessary scripts, and then got to work on the code. I also created a scriptable object, which allows me to define all the different variations on a tile, so like brick, concrete, dirt, etc. in a single file, which just simplifies things a little. I made 33 of them, one for each tile, and numbered them based on the shapes they represent. The final step was to get the tile sprites sliced and into the game. Now the moment of truth. Of course, these things rarely turn out the way you intended the first time. In this case, I got these weird equally spaced rectangular gaps in my tiling. It was mildly upsetting to discover I'd only gone and forgotten 15 tiles in my initial drawings. That eventually brought the total up to 47, which each need to be drawn individually. And that's not to mention I'd like at least three types of tiling to choose from. Right, so once I'd drawn the extra tile shapes and imported them to Unity, I found that while the problem was mostly fixed, there were still some special cases which needed sorting. Thankfully, this didn't call for extra sprites to be drawn. I just needed to add the different neighbour configurations to the tile files I made earlier, so the game knows what tiles should be used when. This was the end result before drawing the final sprites, of course. I made the shape sprites white, just to figure out what colour I wanted the final sprites to be. I decided they should match the dirt colour of the map edges, just to keep things uniform, before adding some details to a single sprite to see what it looked like. Having a look at that in Unity, I was pretty happy with how it looked and decided to give it a shot adding those details to all 46 of the others. I wanted a design that wasn't overly ambitious, as I don't entirely plan on spending my life drawing dirt. I just went for a bit of variation in the edges of the tiles and some pebbles and grass poking through the pathway. Partway through, I decided to add some extra variation details in the dirt colour just to add some texture. Unfortunately, it hasn't come out too clearly in the footage, but you can sort of see it. So after spending a good few hours just drawing these details, I was apprehensive to finally see the results in the game, as I didn't entirely want to end up redrawing these. But here is the basic dirt pathway in the game. As you build, the tiles are selected to give a continuous, rounded shape. Unfortunately, due to compression, it's quite hard to show you what these really look like, but I can assure you the details are much clearer in the game. I don't love the sprites, personally, but they achieve the purpose they set out to achieve. So, due to the current problems in the world, my life has pretty much been inside developing this game. I moved back home and got a second monitor ridiculously cheap on eBay, because who doesn't want a second monitor? Thankfully, at the time of recording this, we are allowed to go outside once a day in the UK, so I've been making the most of that, and the woods near my house are thankfully pretty empty most of the time. Having moved on to sound design, I'm thinking this could be a good place to record some sound effects for the game, uh, especially as there's a craft workshop which has all kinds of machinery. Maybe a video on that at some point, once we're allowed outside for longer periods again. So, after the pathway stuff was done, I decided to add some camera shake whenever something is built or bulldozed. To do this, I just created a shake animation, keeping it short as this shouldn't be a distraction. Obviously this is a simple animation, so it didn't take long to create, and I added a transition which I can trigger from the camera controller and therefore anywhere in the game. Here I'm triggering it whenever an object is bulldozed. This was the first attempt. It works, but the shake is definitely too big and distracting. 
So once I'd shortened it and made the movement smaller, this was the result. I think it's subtle enough to not be distracting while still offering some juicy feedback for the player. With that done, the final task was to get to work on sound effects. I did quite a bit of reading up on this, as there will likely be quite a few layers of sound in the game, and I wanted something that can scale well. Once I'd created a sound effect manager, I then created categories for each of the different sound effect types. The sound effect manager can then quickly select a sound at random from the selected category, passing it back to the audio source to play it. I got some quick test effects up and running, which sounded like this. Not quite ideal, but with some work and good recording, I reckon the game should hopefully sound quite good eventually. I kept working on different sounds and this is the current state of things, with sounds for building and bulldozing. I actually changed things slightly here, with the pitch and volume slightly randomised each time a sound is triggered, just to add some extra variation. I'll be adding forest ambience and music later on, among other things. So that's it for this video, at least a positive for the lockdown situation is that I have an excuse to actually work a bit more on this game, so hopefully there will be another video soon. If you'd like the game when it comes out, you can wishlist it on Steam, the link to that is in the description. Special thanks for this video of course go to my patrons. In particular, I'd like to thank Ismail, Alex, Ethan Hart, Nick, Phil, Sheshpesh, Julian, Echkapivol, Gishki, Pet Patrolman, TJ Baker, Cameron E, Chris Naismith, Kieran Holroyd and Nova. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, there are a bunch of lumber mill related rewards on my Patreon. The link is in the description. If you liked the video, of course remember to subscribe and I shall see you next time. Cheers for watching.